Pasta e fagioli simply means pasta and beans. And there's really kind of two ways to make it. In America, we make it in a very similar style to a, a minestrone. Sort of like tomato broth based soup with vegetables, beans, and pasta. It always has kind of confused me because I was like, what's really the difference between minestrone and pasta e fagioli? But there's actually a different way that they make it in Italy. And when I want to learn about Italian authenticity, I call my friend Stefano over in Italy. So today he's gonna walk us through an authentic Italian recipe for pasta e fagioli, and I'm gonna show you how to make it. So let's just jump right into it. Stefano is the recipe developer and food writer at Felicetti Pasta. Felicetti provides the pasta for Not Another Cooking Show, so I figured I'd use him whenever I have questions about what is authentic and what is not. So a couple days ago, I gave Stefano a call. Hey, ciao Stefano, how you doing? Yeah, I can hear you, I can hear, I can hear you now. Okay, so today I'm making pasta e fagiole, and uh, in America it's made very much in a, a style of minestrone. I know in Italy they make it a very specific way and I just wanted to uh, have you maybe walk me through it real quick so we can execute a real authentic version of the dish here on the show. There are two ways to do pasta fagioli in, in uh, such an Italian way. I mean, on one side we can use lard and vegetables like onions and carrots and on the other side we can use only vegetables and uh, oil. Is lard more traditional? Yeah, on, uh, on certain parts of Italy is more traditional with lard. So I, so that's probably one way to either make it vegetarian or not vegetarian, mm -hmm. one which probably has a little bit more flavor to it or not. Um, some aromatics, onion, garlic, um, herbs, stuff like that, and then you're just going to cook the beans uh, with the vegetables in the water that you soak the beans with? Yeah, uh, basically you use garlic and uh, rosemary and uh, maybe sometime in a different part of Italy you use some other herbs coming from the country but it, the, there is not a particular recipe uh, equal for all the country because you know Italy is very different in every region. Right, 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 okay. So, so essentially you're gonna cook all that down with the beans. Um, once everything's cooked I'm gonna take some of the beans out and puree them, right? Yeah. And that's gonna create that's the right. body of the sauce, pour it yeah. back in, yeah. and then cook the pasta in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be okay. it could be a problem if you puree the, the beans and the vegetables because uh, you have to cook pasta in a too much thick uh, soup. You gotta overcut, it's gotta be much looser because the pasta will thicken it. That's right. That's right. Okay. And after all, you use some some oil and some some grounded pepper, or if you like, some hot red pepper. Uh, Parmigiano. Uh, sometimes, in in some region, for for example, in my region that is Emilia, we use Parmigiano crusts. It's fantastic. All right, well, I'm gonna feel it out. Um, I'm obsessed with Parmigiano, so I might put some in. Uh, <laughs> It's not bad to put Parmigiano inside. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. But uh, that sounds easy, it sounds delicious, and it sounds like a different variation that uh, Americans might be interested in. I think that is a question of proportion, you know, between the vegetables and the beans. The difference right. between minestrone and pasta fagioli is that in minestrone you have a lot of vegetables and small beans. Here in, in pasta fagioli you can have some minestrone, but a lot of beans, that's why. Right, right, right. It's a real pure expression of pasta fagioli. I guess so. And what pasta do you recommend for this? Vitalini, forever Vitalini. Okay, it's one of my favorites too. All right, well thank you Stefano, appreciate your insight. Thank you so much, lovely. All right, talk to you soon. Bye bye. So now that we know the process, we could jump right into making it. And it all started last night when I just got the beans soaking. These are pinto beans. You can use cranberry beans, also known as berlotti beans, which is kind of a, what they use in Italy. You can use white beans. Whatever kind of bean you want, you probably could use, but pinto beans are easy to find and I think they make a great pasta fagioli. You just throw them into a big pot, pour over about eight cups of water, eight to 10 cups. I added eight. I'm actually gonna have to add more because these guys soaked up a lot of this water. 
and the amount of water is sort of essential, but we'll get into that later. So these are ready to go. We just need to cut up some vegetables. I'm just gonna roughly dice up an onion, some carrots and garlic, kind of roughly the same size, nothing too crazy. You're gonna wanna go for a pretty large onion or a couple of small onions, just into a dice. So I'm gonna go with the lard, as Stefano suggested. I've got my carrots, my onion, I've got some rosemary, some garlic. I've got my beans soaking with the water, which we're gonna cook with. We might have to add some more though. I can already see if I add this amount of carrots with that amount of water, the water to everything else proportion is way out of whack. And that water is gonna be key in determining the final consistency. So keep that in mind. So let's go over and make this. Get a large pot or a Dutch oven on medium heat and add the lard and let it melt. Once it's hot, add the garlic, gently cook that for a minute and then add the carrot and onion. Add some salt and the rosemary and let that sweat slowly for about 15 minutes. You do not want any color to develop at all. Just cook until it's all softened and the onions are nicely translucent. Then add the beans and the water that they were soaking in. The water I can see only came up about halfway, which I already know is not gonna be enough. So I'm gonna fill the rest of the pot up with water and I'm gonna kind of assume that's gonna be enough. Bring it up to a boil and then you'll begin to see this scum start to rise to the top. Just skim it off real quick and drop it to a simmer. Simmer the beans for about 40 minutes to an hour until they get a nice al dente. The less you soak the beans, the longer they'll have to cook. I start checking the beans at around 40 minutes, but they're still a little al dente at this point. I'll adjust the seasoning now and let them cook a bit longer. And once they're just right, I'll kill the heat and then I'm gonna get out a blender and fill that blender up about halfway with beans and then enough water to puree the beans into a thick paste. Judging the amount of water and beans to puree at this point is gonna be the trickiest part of this whole process. Be very careful when blending hot liquid as the steam buildup could erupt. Just barely have the lid on and turn to the lowest power and get it going, then open up the lid and the steam will escape. Then just puree until smooth. You can remove that rosemary stem by now too. I get the feeling at this point I need to make it a tad bit thicker, so I reserve some more beans just in case I need to puree a little bit more. Add that puree to the pot to check the consistency. I think I'm gonna need it to go a little bit thicker, so I'm just gonna puree the rest of those beans, add them in, it should be perfect. Turn the heat back on, bring that to a boil before adding the pasta. And you're gonna have to stir very often because it's gonna be very, very easy for the bottom of this pan to scorch as this soup begins to thicken. Now's a good time to use my blender cleaning trick while the blender is freshly dirty. Just rinse it out, then add some hot water about halfway up, a touch of soap, blend it on high for about 30 seconds, then rinse with warm water. Your blender should be quickly and easily cleaned. The soup should already be thickening. We're just gonna adjust the seasoning real quick. And then once the soup is simmering, we can add the ditalini. I find two cups to be just the right amount of pasta. Make sure you do not step away from the pot at this point. Constantly scrape the bottom of the pot. Even if the soup looks loose to you right now, as the pasta cooks, it will quickly thicken this whole thing up. And that has potential to stick to the bottom and burn. So just keep stirring until the pasta is al dente, the soup has thickened, and it's well seasoned. You're ready to serve. It's so good. This recipe makes so much more sense to me than making it just basically like a minestrone. It has deep flavor. We seasoned it throughout. You'd be surprised how much seasoning and salt beans can take. They can take a lot of oil and fat and it's just all gonna suck up that flavor. Now some people like to go even thicker than this. I did a test run and sent it to Stefano and he likes it a little bit thicker than this. I kind of like this texture. I mean, come on. You know, it's just like you dip, you dip some good bread in. It's just like peasant food. And I love it.
you know fazool is just the name of beans but in neapolitan dialect so you can say pasta fagioli pasta fazool whatever you want try this recipe hit me up in the comments let me know what you think about it it's hoodie season get your hate less cook more hoodie link is down in the description thank you to all my patrons scrolling up on the screen right now I love you so much. Your support means the world to me. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the description and on the screen as well. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.